have a little bit of new world news for you guys here in this one we're going to be talking about new world update 2.0.1 this update is going to address a slew of problems that were introduced with new world season 2 and it's going to be live for most people on july the 19th also at the end of this video i'm going to fill you guys in on some pretty major life events that are happening for me the reason i want to talk about those is because it's going to affect my content moving forward primarily over on twitch.tv for the live content but it may affect some of the video content moving forward as well so i just want to bring that up to you guys so if you're interested at all to know what the future plans are for content make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video but for now let's talk about the patch notes and get you guys caught up with all of the new world news so new world update 2.0.1 is going to begin at 11 p.m pt or 6 a.m utc on july 18th it's going to last approximately one hour with this update the summer medley fair is going to be introduced into the game we're not going to go over any of the summer medley fair because i've already covered this in a couple of other videos i'll make sure to link those down in the description below but here are some of the important things they fixed because there were a slew of bugs and problems introduced with season two and so if these things are plaguing your playtime, you may want to come back to new world and enjoy it because some of those things could be fixed with this update so they fix an issue that caused players to get stuck in the quest temple of sands when abandoning it and then they fix an incorrect quest task description they fixed an issue that blocked progression if you died in the breather phase of the soul of the hatchery i've seen this complaint about a whole lot on stream so that is fixed now so now you can progress that quest if you were stuck there they fixed an issue in the quest the vigil's truth that prevented players from repeating the grave portion upon reset the denier and weaver's fin now counts toward any faction quest that require his defeat regardless of the player's faction they fix an issue that block players from continuing into shattered mountain if they immediately travel to brimstone sands after completing the quest a selfless nature i wasn't sure this was happening but that would be very frustrating so now that's fixed for those of you that are trying to get into shattered mountain and couldn't now you can then they just fix an issue with some structures not appearing correctly they fix an issue that caused a player to enter a bad state when catching rare fish in morning dell so if you're a fisherman this is probably music to your ears they fixed an issue that caused the disc of adam encounter to break preventing progression on the quest demon's cauldron so a lot of fixes coming into some of the quests so if you're stuck on some of those things you may want to come back and revisit those quests and now maybe you can complete them then we have some updates coming in for seasons we won't go over all of these we'll just kind of hit the highlights they updated visible collision with arena walls in the season two trials they fixed an issue with a passion prisma bloom journey task that caused it not to specify the type of prisma bloom needed to progress i know this is a pain point for a lot of people as well it is in fact the desert rose prisma bloom this prisma bloom is found in brimstone sands so if you're going around collecting other prisma blooms and wondering why that wasn't progressing that season task that's why you have to collect prisma blooms in brimstone sands then you'll be able to progress that task they also fixed an issue that caused the journey task call of the ancients to not properly record song completion so that's a great fix they fixed an issue that would prevent haddish azar from properly using his white move when all players are downed while in the hatchery and then they also fixed an issue that was preventing players from being able to access their season journey and activity cards in the ui there's been a whole lot of these little problems introduced with season two and i'm super glad to get some of these things fixed hopefully this will kind of smooth out this process of season two coming onto live and hopefully it'll make the game experience a lot better there's also some economy progression and gear fixes coming in they fixed an issue that prevented players who did not earn the level 100 season one pass reward from purchasing the unearned gear set slot in the store so now you can get that if you previously couldn't gypsum cast for shields are now epic rarity to match the rarity of the possible reward this was something that was on the ptr whenever we tested it the gypsum casts were coming out as legendary and they weren't supposed to be so they fixed that they're now going to be epic rarity which is going to match the rarity of the possible reward there's a few combat changes coming in they fixed an issue that caused the dodge and weave passive haste buff to persist when players swapped weapons mid dodge i didn't know this was a thing but apparently it was so it's good that that's getting taken care of and then they're just fixing a visual mistake with the detonate heart runes explosion then we have some ui ux social fixes coming in that are quite nice some of these things were very frustrating they fixed a rare issue that prevented players from leaving their group they fixed an issue that caused azos staff visual effects to get stuck on weapons the player was damaged while closing a corruption portal they fixed a type on the description for the quest air to the sands they fixed an issue that caused a white ui box to appear during musical performance i seen this as soon as season two dropped and it was super irritating i'm glad they're fixing that because i hated seeing it on my screen they fixed an issue that caused the skip button on the summary screen presented at the end of an invasion to become non-functional and then this is the big one here thank goodness this is getting fixed friendship accepted notifications for existing friends will no longer appear when entering outpost rush every time you'd go into outpost rush all of your friends list would start appearing on the right side of the screen saying that you'd accepted their friend request it was super annoying and the more friends you had in your friends list the more notifications would pop up obviously 
So thank goodness that's getting fixed because that was getting incredibly irritating. And then there is a game mode update for PvP arenas. Backfill for PvP arenas is now more responsive, making it more likely for players in the queue to get into pre-match games. Then we have some new store items coming in with this patch as well. We have the regular spike camp skin. This one looks pretty nice, I think. I quite like that one, actually. Then we have a new emote bundle coming in. We have the pondering emote, the plotting emote, the pout emote, eyes on you emote, cry emote, and whistle emote for 9,000 marks of fortune. So if you like to purchase the emotes like me, this will be a good bundle for you to buy. That's about the only thing I usually buy out of the store are the emotes. I really like them. I think they do a good job on most of these, but there they are. There's some skins, new emotes coming in with this patch as well. So that's the news. Again, that patch is going to be hitting on July the 19th for most people. It is New World Update 2.0.1. If you are stuck on some of those quests or getting frustrated with some of the bugs introduced into the game, well, now hopefully your play experience will be a lot better because it seems like a lot of those things are getting fixed. So I said at the beginning, of the video that I had some pretty life-changing things happen to me recently that could potentially change up my content here on YouTube. It is definitely going to affect it over on the Twitch side. I know a lot of you guys do watch over on Twitch, so just wanted to make sure I brought this to you guys so you were in the loop of what was going on. So recently, I was approached by my old employer. For those of you that may not know, I am a CPA by trade or was before I came into full-time content creation. I still am a CPA, just not a practicing CPA. But they came back to me and they asked me if I wanted my old job back as a CFO. I told them no initially. They came back to me with a better offer for more money for four days a week to work. I told them no to that as well. Then they came back again and said, you can work Tuesday through Thursday and we'll pay you the same money. I don't know how to say no to that. So I did accept the offer. So I am going to go back to being a CFO. I'll be doing that every Tuesday through Thursday. I'll be in the office there. So that's going to switch up my stream schedule. I will now stream on Twitch on Mondays, but I will do a very long stream on Mondays. So it'll be like eight o'clock AM CST on into the evening. We'll probably do like 10 hour streams or something every Monday. And then I'll be streaming on Fridays, the other day that I'm at home and not up there in the office. We will also be streaming a normal stream. We'll start at like 8 a.m. CST, probably go until about 2 or 3 o'clock p.m. CST. And then we'll also be streaming now on the weekend some, whereas before we weren't. So the new schedule now will be Mondays, Fridays, and then either a Saturday or Sunday stream whenever I can fit that in over the weekends. I don't think this change will affect a whole lot here on YouTube. I should still be able to cover the game here in an effective manner. And on Twitch, I'll still be streaming the same exact amount of hours as I was before. We're just gonna spread them out into different days. But I just wanted to bring you guys that update. It is a pretty big life-changing event for me. Not that a lot of you care about that, but some of you may care about the content that we're producing here. So I do produce content over on studioloot.com as well. If you're unfamiliar, that's really why I'm full-time. I am part owner in studioloot.com then of course we stream and youtube is a fairly new ish thing to me i've only been doing youtube for less than a year and i appreciate the support that you guys have shown so far on the channel it means the absolute world to me but i still will be doing content pretty much full time i'm just adding in the cfo job on top of it i don't plan on stopping content at any time just a little bit of a schedule shift on the live streaming side of things but that's it That'll do it for this one. I just wanted to keep you guys updated on everything and keep you guys updated on the latest New World news. And one last thing before we get out of here, I will be covering New World moving on to the foreseeable future, but we are going to add another game to the docket as well that we'll be covering here on the channel. I've already posted several videos on this game. They are having a big announcement on Thursday of this week. So after that happens, we will then know an early access date and that will be another game that we add to the docket. So this channel will be New World plus some Wayfinder content. It's exactly what I'll be streaming and creating re content for over on Studio Loop. Com. But as for now, that'll do it for this one, boys and girls. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next one.